Welcome back for our third and final presentation, Book Talking to Middle and High Schoolers, presented by Jake Rundle, Teen Librarian at Hastings Public Library in Hastings, of course. Talking to teens is not always about selling them on the plot of the book. Sometimes it's about engaging them in another aspect of the story and then tying it all into reading. Jake is going to show you how to have fun discussions with teens. And he will share some great tips on how to handle unruly teens and how to engage the quiet ones. Let's welcome Jake. Well, hello. Oh, yes, I'm taller than Kathy. <laughs> uh, so to start, I'm going to show a video. And I hope, against all hope, that it works. But we're not going to watch all of it because it's seven minutes long. I took it using the library's pair of Google Glass. I go to the middle school and talk about books and making good life choices and just how to be cool and not, you know, silly middle school kids. Um, so this is me and I think six graders. And we'll blow it up here just to give me a second. This is the Google Glass. The library bought a pair. Not many people have them. Um, I think only one of the library in the entire country has them for people to play with. And our first day to play with them, unless you ask for the last thing when I'm done talking about books, is Thursday night at the library. And you get a special sneak peek because you're here and you're sixth graders and I like you. My head moves too much, so I apologize right now. I also, talk. this entire thing is being recorded on video. <laughs> Because a lot of librarians never know how I do book talks to, to students. I really, your glasses, I just dig them. Holy cow. You just look like the smartest man alive. Like, that was completely like talking about one thing, and we're going to switch gears real hard. But, rock on. Um, so, we're going to talk about some books. I have less books than when I started, because obviously you can check most of them out. The first one I'm going to talk about is this Star Wars graphic novel. You can't check it out because it doesn't have a barcode yet, because I bought it just this weekend, and I brought it from my car to here to talk to you. For people who have at order six, but before Luke and Leia and Han Solo. So after yeah. the third prequel movie, before movie number four, slash number one. So, yeah, the Clone Wars, the things they don't talk about in the, in the, fourth, in the first movie back in 79. You're like, what? Huh? The Clone Wars? It's about Vader and about um, space pirates and Jedi. Oh, he got shot. <laughs> Spoilers. Anyway, and if you want to check it out, you need to put your name on a post-it note and put it here so then when I do get it put into the system, I can bring it back to Ms. Bot and she can check it out to you here and you can read it. You jive? Yes, sir. The Ewoks, you mean? It's more so about the little bears. Little bears? <laughs> You're lucky I'm on camera right now because little bears, we're in a fight. Your glasses were cool, but now we're in a fight. Um, so I, I show that because that is, that is essentially my book presentation style with anyone who is over the age of 12 and not yet appear in that working group, so anywhere between middle school and college. Do one now? Oh, like that. Sorry, there's my face. Um, so it's it's a little more confrontational than I know most librarians are used to. I know a lot of librarians come up and they go, well, this book was just so nice. The characters were so sweet. and the, um, I make it a habit to stop in the middle of saying something and be like, gosh, I really like your shirt. Not your hair, but your shirt. Good choice today. Um, I never... <laughs> I never make a, a habit of learning anyone's names so that when we're in the middle of a book talk, I can say, Pink, Pink, you should read this. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
what the hell is pink? I'm like, pink shirt, hair, like this. And then this, uh, this little girl will be like, yes, you. And then she'll look behind her and be like, are you sure? I'm like, yes, here. I just hand her the book. And she looks at me in utter bewilderment. But um, I find that it works well if you don't give them the option to say no. Kind of what Kathy said, don't take the option to say no. Just be like, here, you're going to like this. Or you're not going to like this, but tough rocks. I'm handing it to you. You can, you know, secretly drop it back on the table later. Um, that is kind of my step the first. Uh, I'm going to... I brought some books that I'm going to pull up and, and mock book talk if you were middle school or high school students so you kind of get an idea um, because there's, I mean, there's kind of a flow. So the first thing I'll do is I brought Nancy Drew's Clue of the Whistling Bagpipes, The Hardy Boys, The Secret of Skull Mountain, and The Black Stallion and Flame. And I brought these because, yes, they're great stories, and yes, everyone's been reading them since time immemorial. But if you take these to a middle school, do not expect anyone to touch them because they look gross. And while librarians are all about don't judge a book by its cover, just don't even know. I, they republished Nancy Drew with sexy new covers and paperback now. Go buy those. I mean, uh, she, she uses a cell phone. She's a brunette now. She's... Lady of the world. Sorry, microphone people. Um, don't even take them. Um, if you do take them, don't talk about them. Leave them on your table because what I do is, so I talk on that table, I put all the books that I brought with me out, and then you know, I leave them 15 minutes because they have to get a book in that class period. So they either go and get one from the library shelves or they can peruse mine. Uh, and that's where I do all my sneaky secret, not secret, but all my sneaky book stuff. Because uh, I'll talk about seven or eight books, but I'll bring... 30, and then kids can peruse. So if they really want to read Black Stallion and Flame, I'm not going to talk about it. It's probably a good book. Looks ugly, but someone has the option to sneak it away. Uh, similarly, I always sneak a book about the gays because there's going to be a middle school or high school kid that's like, oh my gosh, I need to know something about that. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to say this book is about boys kissing. I'm going to just put it on the table, and then people can look at it. They can pick it up, flip through. If it's something they want, they can go check it out. Nothing said, no one talks, no one looks. It's very sneaky. Um, but it works because um, middle schoolers run on a, oh, what's a nice word for it? Kind of a, a popularity economy. And so I try to go in there and um, ease into speaking to them without messing up that flow. And you can obviously, when you get to a middle schooler, ask when you see where the circles of influence are, and so I try to call those people out immediately and drop them a level um, because, uh, one, it's kind of fun. Not, don't put down middle school kids if you know that they're going to crumble. But you find the ones that you know can take a little ribbon, and you give them a little ribbon because everyone else is going to say, oh, it's not, you don't have to be a nice person to get respect. It's a terrible way to say it, but it works. And I learned that while working with Kathy McMahon in Fremont, when you book talk to anyone, you give them just a little bit of disrespect because then they will try their damnedest to earn it because it's uh, something magic with 13-year-old brains that if you like, you, you maybe can't handle that because you're just, you're just not the smartest person, Nancy. I'm sorry. You just, I, don't, I don't think you could handle this book and then, by God, Nancy's going to take that book and she's going to read it twice as fast as you thought. And she's going to be like, what now, Rundle? I've actually had some kids do that. They come... I'm back through, and someone's like, I read that. I'm like, oh, I'll get you. How'd you like it? Totally rocked it. I'm like, I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad you made it through. I didn't think you had it in you. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's, 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 not, it's not going in there and being a total jerk, though. Um, there's a fine line you have to walk. Sometimes I think I might have missed it. Um, and usually that's why it's always good to have the actual librarian in the school there because they can kind of steer you around the trouble spots. They swoop in um, and tell me when to just talk to another book because uh, I will get lost on a tangent. There was one boy, um, we were playing with the Google Glass, and he asked, Mr. Rundle, how, do you, how, how can you be swag? And I was, first I had to figure out what that was because that's a, that's a complete thing. Um, and then we looked it up on Urban Dictionary, and then we decided that swag was being confident, and then we decided that swag was wearing suspenders and glasses that you didn't need to wear. 
Um, but we decided that flat build caps, while swag, are also pretty, pretty much what losers do, and you shouldn't be that way. Um, and then that got us onto how girls should date nice boys because bad boys are bad for a reason. And boys, you should be nice boys and not bad boys because nobody likes a bad boy. Um, but that took up 20 minutes of our class period when I was supposed to be talking about books, but we were engaging on the murky social roles of students and how to be a nice person and how to be cool without being, you know, a complete and utter jerk. Work mouth. Um, so, an example of a book um, that I will, I will, I will um, tell people that they probably can't handle um, would be Forgive Me, Leonard Peacock. Love this book because it's definitely a book I wouldn't put in middle schoolers' hands per se unless I knew they were ready for it. And the middle school librarian and the, the school librarian and the, the teacher there, they usually can help me figure out who could be reading this book. Um, if you're not aware, it's about um, Leonard Peacock, and he wakes up one day, and he's going to take a gun to school, he's going to shoot them all up, because he is just mad about it. Um, and the thing I like the most about this book is by the time you finish, um, you sympathize with this kid, and you want him to get, I mean, you don't want him to shoot the school because that's bad, but you feel real bad and you understand why he's making that choice. And so then you're, that's the dicey part. We're like, God, do I, do I root for this kid to shoot these people who treated him terribly or not? Um, but this is one of those books that I will, I will, I will breeze over. Um, I will give you know, bare plot points. Kid wants to shoot up a school, and by the time you're done, you want him to shoot the school. But I don't think you guys can handle that, so I'll just put it here. And then inevitably you'll have an eighth grader that's like, and they'll just sneak it off to check out. And it's, it's, I mean, it's one of the best stories I've read in the last two years. Um, this and 13 Reasons Why is another one that's dicey subject matter for the middle, lower, uh, you know, ninth, ninth grade, eighth grade, seventh grade. But it's good stories if they're in that situation. So if they're being bullied, it's, it's I mean, it's a life lesson how not to react. You know, don't take a gun to school. Please don't commit suicide. But this is why these things are, great and terrible books at the same time. Um, okay, so I have here two examples of graphic novel, X-Men and Naruto. I love comic books, myself about nerds. So I'll go and be like, you guys should all read this because look, words and pictures. If a picture is worth a thousand words, this picture, this page is worth how many words? One thousand plus thirty. Good. You just did a great job. It's that easy to sell a comic book. Pictures, words, great stories. The other one is Naruto. I go and I say, this book is in a style called manga. It's Japanese. You read the book backwards, so if you read it like normal, it's going to say stop, go the other way. I don't read these books because I'm too old to learn how to read backwards. But it might be something you're interested in. So here, you take it. And so we're like, what do you mean? What do you mean you can't? You don't, it's, it's just backwards. I'm like, sorry, too old. But people tell me it's good, so, so I brought it. You guys think about it. Um, which also works. Um, another thing I will recommend if you're in charge of collection development, Make sure if you've got number one, you also have at least through number 40, because Lord have mercy, when you stop at 20 and pick up again at 35, someone's going to be on you, because it's what happened. Hey, Jake, hey, Jake. Yes, Tristan. Do you have the next one yet? And the great thing about that particular student when he came into our library is that he was, he's, the library is his place to come hang out because he doesn't go home, and he's, you know, a high school kid, so he's kind of an ignorant walking waste of space on occasion, but it's really, because, but you can barter good behavior. You know, Tristan, I was gonna get the next two, but you're kind of being a terrible person today, so I, I, I guess I can wait a week. Oh, that's awesome. So he'll, you know, I'll get a week's worth of good behavior out of him if I feed him three more books. So um, it's, it's, it's all about economy. <laughs> uh, other books I take, I always try to take at least a nonfiction look for both. I've got this, uh, A Girl's Guide to Fitting and Fitness. 
I say it's not just about girls getting fit, boys don't get fat. It's a bad thing. I was once. Um, and and it, it, yes, it's geared to girls, but guys could take the same lessons and apply it to getting fit. Uh, also, I always take the how to tie a tie book, and I say, men, learn how to tie a tie. Ladies, ladies, learn how to tie a tie, because you will be an invaluable asset to a man who obviously didn't listen to me and learned how to tie a tie. <laughs> um, I never try to gender, gender pigeonhole any book I bring. I'll bring books that are obviously girl books, and, like, and I'll purposefully hand it to the, the kid wearing sweatpants and the basketball jersey. I'm like, here, you should read that. I'm like, dude, trust me, it's, it's going to change your life. It really won't. You probably won't read it. But, but he might think about it, and it might get, he might be interested enough to pick it up and read a few pages, and then who knows, maybe he's hooked. Um, but I try purposefully not to say, oh, Girls only, boys only, um, because that's just rude. And knowledge is, you know, like it is. These are all kind of obvious things. I know I'm saying them, but um, it is helpful at times when dealing, especially with middle school kids, um, just force feed them and never take yourself seriously. That's kind of a side note to how it works. Uh, We just got this book in, so I'm going to take it everywhere because it's George Takei, and everyone who's on the internet knows who that is. Um, and it's just his writings on on the internet and being a good person. Um, I mostly brought it because I wanted to practice book talking it um, because I haven't yet done it. And so they'll inevitably the who's George Takei, which then means I get to step back and say, "You guys remember Star Trek?" And they're like, "No." I'm like, "Well, then this conversation is going to be a lot longer than we planned." And then. <laughs> We'll spend five minutes on the greatness that is Star Trek and its whole expanded universe and how there are books all about it and how George Takei was a part of it in the beginning and how now he's an internet sensation because he's a good person and why you should be awesome. Um, I like this book especially because here's, there is a chapter on the equality meme that was going on and so there's one that he put up with Paula Dean sitting at the top of one and it's just it's, I don't know if you can see it. It's like two sticks of butter, y'all. And that's all it is. Um, but he is a brilliant, brilliant marketer himself. Um, I brought this book because I debuted it at that middle school book talk you saw me at. I don't know if you did it. What we found in the sofa and how it saved the world. Um, it's JFIC. I don't read JFIC anymore. I'm too old for that. So what I do is I find JFIC that either has a new sticker on it or looks newish and take it. Maybe I read the inside right as I'm saying, like, oh, hold on a second. Oh, you should read this book. It's really good. <laughs> They're like, well, what's it about? Like, well, it's about River and Freak and Fiona, and they find a zucchini-colored crown that does some magic stuff, and um, there's a eccentric neighbor and an intelligent domino and a DNA sequencer and some hot air balloons, and yeah, you should probably get it. Um, sometimes that's enough. That's one of those times where the middle school librarian or the high school librarian seems to know, I've actually read this. It's really good. We have three copies over here on the shelf. And then you, three people peel off and go get it. Um, again, it's part of that not taking yourself seriously. And nobody has time to read all the stuff that comes into your library. I don't, I don't care who you are or how much you love to read. There's just too much stuff. Um, so I try to negotiate my time. And I don't make, I don't apologize for not having read it. I say, this looks good. I grabbed it because it's got a new sticker and it's got this author who I like. So you should probably all like it. Um, I also encourage him to read it and then tell me if I was worth a thing. I'll be like, um, so read this. Scarf. Yes, scarf you right there with the scarf and the look on your face that says, I don't know this. Read this. Tell me if it's worth it. You come, come see me. Usually they never do. But they're middle school kids, so what do you expect? Um, the last thing I do that I'm really terrible at in terms of talking to middle school kids about books is realistic fiction. Um, I was never a fan of it when I was a middle schooler and a high schooler. I'm still not a fan of it. Um, give me a good sci-fi fantasy and I will give you 
45 minutes of great book talk. Um, gave me a story about the range of the not so pretty girl. So I will, I mean, I'll take this like, oh, Carl Duke, you writes about sports. Sports are cool, I guess, uh, if that's your thing. So, but I, I mean, I'll be like, this book is about Jonas. He plays basketball. Uh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> and, um, and then inevitably someone will pick it up and be like, oh, I've read this. Or, you know, that, that kid who reads everything that Duker's ever put out and be like, it was actually a really good book and I think you should probably be like, all right, then you explain to me. That's the other thing is always get them to participate, even if they don't want to. Um, because it's a short-term setting. I mean, like Kathy said, if they don't want to be there, don't let them hang out there. I mean, if you're going to have a team volunteer. But within the confines of a 45-minute space with middle school or high school kids, say, hey, read this out loud. Start with the the inside blurb and tell me what it's about. Um, or ask them what's the last book they read. Um, invariably someone will be like, it was whatever book we were supposed to read for reading class. Like, and did you like it? Where's my teacher? <laughs> oh. That's okay. Make good life choices. Um, and then the last thing I always say, I said the last thing once already, but I'm changing my mind. I always take adult nonfiction. Because even if it's too too hard for them, this one is uh, about getting fit with Joe Man. Um, <laughs> and this one's called Super Graphic. I took this because it's just a, a book of infographics about superheroes. Um, I took it to the high school once. This one is my favorite semi-work appropriate infographic ever. Let me find it. It's toward the back. Mm, hold on, don't worry. Almost there, I promise. It's in here somewhere. But so as we're flipping through, there's oppression and rebellion in Persepolis. So it's so it, it tracks like the the nerdy stuff. It tracks the comic booky stuff. Um, I highly recommend you buy this book. Uh, the Punisher's Kill Count. There's also a um, uh, one of you know. Will the Punisher kill you? So it's such a are you a mutant? Yes or no? And then you go left or right. And everything always says, too bad he killed you. <laughs> Every single time. Um, oh my goodness. Yes. The most line, the most quotable lines from 300. This is Sparta, this is madness, this is blasphemy. Here we go. The power pack. There's the average size of a woman's breasts and the average size of power girl's breasts. And then there's this line here that says completely superfluous breast size. And so it's just, um, it's my favorite infographic because it's fair that comic books, you know, overhype a lady's assets and a man's assets, for that matter. Um, here's a, what would you do if the punishment were trying to kill you? And it always ends in kill him. Um, but it, it's, it's those, it starts conversations with people who are talking, I mean, that awkward time of life where body image means a lot to people. You can be like, hey, don't use comic books as your, as your, as your, your basis. I bring the Joe Mejeger book because I don't know if has anyone seen this book before? Well, we'll leave it for these people first. This is him in middle school, high school. And this is him now. So I'd say, ladies, gentlemen, this is who you are probably right now. And this is what you could be. And then I send, and there's the fitness book right there. Or take this home. Uh, uh, because it's about What's the words I want to use? Uh, it's it's about sneaking it in those conversations that you can't have with a middle school kid because they either can't comprehend it or they don't know how to verbalize it. Um, but it's sneaking it in there so that they know that you know that you're cool and you get it because you were that age once. Um, so that's the book stuff. Any questions on book talkery? Online? Any online's? No. 
That's okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about quickly that I do with um, middle school and high school kids is I take everything that we have that could possibly be tech and I show it to them. So uh, that means, so Hastings is pretty fortunate that my director lets me buy just about whatever I want as long as there's money for it. Um, so we negotiated the Quad Cities, Hastings, Carney, Grand Island, and Holdridge. Um, we negotiated with Quarter Books to get Zinio. So I go to the middle school and the high school and say, hey, do you read magazines? No. Well, you should. Here, have them for free. Um, we are the only library in the state to have Hoopla right now. It's recorded book. It's not. It's Midwest Tapes uh, streaming music video and audiobook service. Um, it's the bee's knees. You take that and you say, do you like to watch TV on your computer? Eh, sometimes. Well, here you can do it for free now. Um, Mango. Uh, what's that thing? Overdrive. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Uh, we just got this thing called Cypress Resume. It lets you, um, you access it using your library card, and you can make a resume in 15 minutes. So, hey, you're going to start your first part-time job, 15-year-old? Boom, you've got a resume. You're ahead of the pack. Um, hey, workforce development, do you need to find, you know, three people who've been out of work for 10 years, a job, but they don't know the first thing about Microsoft Word. Well, here, do this. Um, so it's, I mean, that's how the overlap happens in our library, but you take anything tech and you throw it at them as fast as possible because the, they'll eat it up or they won't, but at least you're doing the due diligence to say, here are our online things that you don't need to even come to the library for. You can keep your street cred, you know, suspenders and swagger. Girl who's on the basketball team, I see you sneaking past the library because you don't want people to know you like it. That's fine. Here are ways you can use the library without even having to show up. Um, and you'll surprisingly get a lot of tech questions. Um, someone asked me once, does Hoopla work on the browser for a Nintendo DS? And I was like, um, I don't know. Let me ask. So it's those things where, sadly, it didn't. Um, but it was a question I would have never expected. And a kid was like, hey, I've got this device. Can I use it on that? Um, so we had to tell them no. But at the same time, um, it facilitated me to know something. So if someone else asks, I can say, sorry, Charlie. That's not how it works. Um, Tumble books. Does anyone use Tumble books? Not you, Dana. You don't count. <laughs> if you go and talk with younger sets, um, or even, I mean, they do have Tumble Book Learn, which is a high school version. Uh, all of the Orca stuff is going to be there. It's all either audiobook or computer read. They have graphic novels. They have classics. It's all free books. It's all wonderful. Um, and it's it's a it, it's accessible as long as you redirect from the Hastings Public Library site. So if you feel like looking at it, just navigate to hastings.lib.ne.us and click Tumble Books here on the side, and you're good to go. So try it out. Shameless plug. Um, <laughs> and lastly, um, I'm gonna talk about this more tomorrow. So if I see you at the Tech Services ITART roundtable, we'll talk about unique collections, but Buy stuff that aren't books that kids like. I mean, don't, I mean, by no means should you write the grant for the makerspace unless you really want to be that guy or lady. Um, but uh, this is a GoPro camera. It's $199 at Walmart. It's kind of expensive, but it basically comes in a shatterproof case. It's waterproof for the most part. You can throw it against the wall. You can shoot it in a rocket. Um, there's a video on YouTube of a man who skydove out of an airplane. It fell off. Uh, spun for a couple thousand feet, landed in the middle of a pig farm. Six months later, the farmer found it, pulled the SD card, which was still just fine because it was still in the case, and posted the, internet to, the video to YouTube, you know, trying to find the owner of this camera because it fell and plummeted to the earth, and it's just fine. So nearly indestructible camera, it records in HD, it doesn't record sound, so it's, it's for those kids that like to skateboard, that like to rollerblade that like to put their put themselves in harm's way doing fun things. Um, people surfers use them. Uh, NASCAR drivers use them. Um, it's really the go-to camera for any extreme anything because it'll record it. It'll record it nicely and it's really simple to pull off a flash drive and stick it in your computer and there you have it. Um, 
and then it, and then that lends itself to being like, oh, and we've got this computer that has Movie Maker or iMovie. So here, let me show you how to make that. So then it, it lends itself into that tech literacy stuff where you can show kids cool things. Um, and then we bought a pair of Google Glass. They're mostly outside of most people's realm of collection development, but we had special money from Kino that we only get once every four years, and this happened to be our money year. And so I got an invite, and I asked my boss if we could try them out. Um, and she said, sure, let's do it. Um, and so really outside of just showing people how cool technology is, and you've got a computer on your face now, that's the extent of really our programming with it right now. Uh, but we're hoping that it inspires uh, middle school, high schoolers, and the college set to start learning how to program apps for phones and for Android devices and then load those things on there because you really, I mean, other than dropping it and actually physically breaking it, you really can't do much to it to break the thinker. So we're, we're hoping to inspire some people to make us a bunch of money by making a, a, winning, a winning app for the eye, the, the, the glass. Um, crap, it's still got 20 minutes. <laughs> um, any questions, I suppose? Sorry to... Yes, Nancy? Okay. So the Google Eye and the... GoPro? Camera thing. Um, what are some of the activities you've done with your kids? Have you actually gone outside with some kids and, and done like the skateboarding thing? We haven't yet. Um, the, we haven't. Uh, we've had this since February, so it's been cold. Uh, it's checked out a couple times. There are, yeah, I let them check out. The, the GoPro checks out. It uh, checks out for three days. Uh, the Glass does not check out because it's kind of a waffly in-between space between Google and what libraries do and whether the terms and conditions allow that. So I, we take it places and let people play with it and let you put it on your face, but it doesn't check out, per se. The GoPro checks out. Um, it comes with the headgear. Um, we're going to buy more stuff for it. You can get one so you can wear it on your chest, you can get one so you can put on a stick and it can ride behind you, um, one for like it's, it sits in a suction cup and you can stick it on the front of your car or on the, your motorcycle, I mean there's lots of different places. Yes. Um, yes. Nancy's question was have we done any programming with the glass or with the GoPro? Um, the answer was no, nothing specific. Um, there is a trail run that happens every summer in Hastings. Uh, it's a four-mile trek through um, around a place called Prairie Lake. Um, so this year, the organizer of the race who graduated high school with me said, hey, we want to do some intentional stuff. I want someone to wear the camera. I want someone to run with the glass. We'll give you two free entries. Um, we, we would like to use one of your display spaces because it's um, National Runner's Day, a week before the race. Um, and so the, he's going to put a book display. He's going to ghostwrite our weekly article for the, the newspaper because every Friday the, they give us space if we want to put an article about books we've read or something cool happened at the library. Um, so he's going to ghostwrite our article. Um, we're just going to fill the entire library with running and, and running mania is, is the first goal. Um, there is a the rural school where I debuted this. It's called Silver Lake. The kid who checked it out, um, he blasted this off on a rocket, uh, was his goal. I didn't see that video. He also wore it to basketball practice, uh, and he wore it um, four-wheeling, and he did leave those videos on the SD card, so I didn't get to see some of the stuff he did. Um, so it, it's, there could be some really fun programming stuff you do. The problem right now is that we have one MacBook that has iMovie, which is the by far the, I will say, the easier way to teach kids how to edit movies. It's also what they're using in schools. When your school has an assignment, they give you a MacBook or an iPad and say, here, go cut it together. So we don't have the computing space or the studio space to let people manipulate their film after they make it. So it's, that's why we're not doing anything really structural or intentional with it, because right now we can only offer you the camera. We can't really offer you anything past that in terms of editing or producing or voiceovers. And I can get you a computer. If you want to just straight dump the video straight to YouTube, that's easy enough. But most of the things you record on this, you would rather piece together with something nicer. Can you preview the video on there? You cannot. You have to, yep. 
it's a ticket out. Um, you can plug it in with a USB cord. Um, comes with that. Uh, you can take still pictures of it uh, with it. You can um, you can connect it straight to the internet. I don't know exactly what that does. So you can connect it to your uh, phone with the app. I haven't played with that part yet, um, but it's great because it does high def pictures. I mean it does 1080p recording. It's it's going to be as nice a thing as you can get for checking something out from the library. Um, which is I don't know, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. Any other questions? I only have 13 minutes. Oh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> Share a couple other things that you've been engaged in. You do book blocks, obviously mm -hmm. you're great at that. Do you do any other kind of team programming um, as far as crafts or gaming or anything like that? The question is, do I do other team programming? And officially, technically, I am um, the collections librarian. So it's my job to spend the collection budget every year um, down to zero or negative monies if, if I get too crazy. Um, and officially, um, the teen programming belongs to the children's librarian. I just assist. Um, Kathy does really great work in our library with the zero to fifth grade. That's that's where her passion is, and she does it fantastically. And I can't identify with a fifth grader if you pay me money. I, I worked with them for a while before I got my first library gig, um, and they're hard. Um, I identify with a middle schooler because I like to think that I never really progressed past ninth grade in terms of my emotional state. Um, <laughs> And they identify with me, which is which is handy. Um, so that's really where I get in doing that thing. Uh, also, um, not to throw the, the gender card, but middle school guys that, and high school guys work better when they're talking to a dude. I mean, there are. I mean, Kathy does. Kathy McMahon does a great job of interacting with all of the kids who come to her. But she's going to connect with those girls and ask about pictures, you know, on their cell phone of those boys more than a guy is going to connect with her. So it's nice that we can split that and I can go to the high school and say, guys, you should read this book because it's going to make you a better person. If you know how to tie a tie, you can be a gentleman and a gentleman gets a job. A gentleman gets a prom date and a gentleman graduates high school. And that resonates with some of them. Um, but I also do, um, whew, so what else do I do at the library? Uh, so I'm in charge of the collection. Uh, which means I'm in charge of all the weeding, all of the collection maintenance, all that fun stuff. I catalog, um, which is my least favorite thing to do, uh, but it is the most important because your catalog is your first means to collection access and something, something, something. What was your involvement in this $3 million campaign? The library, the library is... Um, pushing to raise, uh, we're fundraising for a renovation. We built our current building in 62, or it opened in 62. Um, it was a beautiful space, and the intention was that on the first floor is going to be all the books and the children's room, which was locked when the children's librarian wasn't there uh, at all times. So there was one door to get in, and if the children's librarian wasn't there, it was closed. I'm sorry. And the second floor was offices and an art gallery space. And so it worked really well until we put the fiction collection upstairs because it was too big. And then we added public computers. And then we've been running networking cables across the ceiling because the building was built um, in, in, a, in, in what is beneficial to us. It was built on pillars. So all the power runs to six pillars that run through the building. Um, but every pillar has a light switch because they thought at the time, well, we can't trust library ladies to to search the building at night to make sure that everyone's gone. So we better put light switches on every pillar so you have to go into the library and turn off the lights. <laughs> um, and and, and if, the, if the power is not there, then you're, you're just tough rocks. So there's a, a section of computers we have in our front entryway uh, where we literally just strung cable across and then we shot cables down one of those standing pillars. And so it, it, it drops into this beautiful wooden desk and so we have the pack and the database computer, and then four public access computers to use the internet. But it's just kind of this free-floating thing. And if you ever notice, there's just this kind of ugly-looking pipe of cords that come up and then run. Oh, it's because of the asbestos we can't drill. I've been 
So we are in we are in the works to um, fundraise five million dollars for a renovation. The library foundation and the library have to raise three and a half million. The city had a sales initi sales tax initiative passed a couple years ago, um, and so we split the funds with um, the streets department that gets more money to do more street resurfacing. And we have a baseball field called Duncan that has been around for a thousand years, I think. Um, it was, it's a big brick, um, really awesome baseball field, um, but it still had like the tin trough in the men's room. I mean, it's it's just it was old and time to time to do something nice. So they got new lights and they're slowly renovating all that. But that money goes there. So we get about one and a half million dollars from them. Um, so we've just been trying all sorts of fun ways to make money. Um, so we do pub quizzes at the bar. Uh, it was with those. The library goes to two bars a month, and we do random trivia or trivia on a theme. So tonight uh, at Murphy's Wagon Wheel, if you're around, it's 80s movie trivia. Uh, I will not be there. It's in Hastings, <laughs> Hastings, Nebraska, on First and Lincoln. They have really great boneless wings, and tonight is their 40 cent wing night, so it's very good. Um, also, 250 shorts. So usually they come in a 20 ounce glass of gin and tonic, but you can get a Half size for two fifty. Um, definitely my favorite part. <laughs> uh, but no, and so, so we. Uh, I've been doing a lot of outreach in terms of, um, I, if we want people to think that the library is a place that deserves the money that they're going to donate, so that we can serve the community, we need to be a presence in the community and say, hey, we're not a place where books go to die. We're not a place where we drop off our middle school kids and we don't like, deal with them. We are not a place where the homeless come in the summer because it's too dang hot outside. We are, we are on the bookmobile at the park. We are at your daycare. We are camped out at Walmart on a Sunday afternoon um, checking out books to people. We haven't done that yet, but that's my goal. My, my someday goal is to get our bookmobile to just park itself at Walmart on a Sunday and check out books because it's the busiest place in town on a Sunday afternoon. I have a fundraising idea for you. What's that? Um, have a library function. You got all your non-fiction car books, put them out on that table, mm. um, charge them $10. Our library is doing that this summer. Mm. Yeah, so it's already 85 people doing it. Yeah. The fundraising idea is a library car show, because then you have all of your collections of car stuff, and we, you get to see a bunch of cool cars. Right. And that actually... You uh, charge the car guy yeah. to $10 to bring the car in and enter it in the contest, mm -hmm. and what I'm doing in my library um, then whoever from the town that comes and looks at it gets to vote, and the best car gets to take home a brand new non-fiction table book on the Oh, cool. Yeah, and that's fun. Uh -huh. These car guys, they'll come. For miles around? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, will, I will, while we're shamelessly plugging things, um, <laughs> on the, the Hastings Public Library website, which is hastings.lib.ne.us, hopefully a shorter URL coming soon, um, we have our social media outlets. We have a, um, a public relations and volunteer coordinator. He's new in his position. His name is Michael. I took him to PLA, and people like him because he's young and he has good ideas. He runs that stuff. Um, so if you're looking for some good ideas on how to run your social media, um, please check out our stuff. We do pretty decent at Facebook and Twitter. Michael's been curating our Pinterest for about a year and a half now. Um, and then we just started Google Plus because of the Google Glass. So really that's my baby, and it's where all the videos and pictures go um, from any time I take the glass to anywhere. Um, so if you want to look at the videos um, of, of the stuff I've done, we went to the middle school science fair, and so I had middle school kids tell me their science fair projects while I recorded them um, and just field trips on different occasions. So, ta-da.